Welcome <laughs> to this comprehensive journey as we try to figure out what Arbor's D&D stats are. We are on a dog D&D ability score experiment mission here today. I mean, over the last bunch of weeks, we have tested Arbor's strength and his dexterity, his constitution, his intelligence, his wisdom, and his charisma. And today we are putting it all together and we are going to see what his ability scores might be in D&D and what class he might play. So watch all the way to the end where we will discuss his scores to see if you agree on what class he might be. And I think we're ready to go. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Ready? Oh, okay. Okay. Come on. Let's go. No. What's happening? <laughs> what would you do if you had to hold onto a dragon in mid-flight? Or fight a giant? Or maybe even carry a hobbit to Isengard? Would you have the strength to do it? If not, never fear! Fantasy Science Sarah is here! And Arbor. Arbor's here too. That's good. <laughs> what is strength? Strength is the first ability score on a D&D character sheet. And it's all about your ability to... And it's all about your power to resist force, power to resist an attack, and your capacity for endurance and exertion. Which could come up pretty handy in a fantasy world, you know, your physical strength, as you climb mountains, grapple monsters, and maybe even carry your familiar after a long day of fighting monsters. Stronger bones. When you do a strength workout, you put temporary stress on your bones, triggering bone building cells to rebuild your bones stronger. Strong bones reduces the risk of osteoporosis, fractures, and falls. Gelatinous cube. With only a plus two to strength, these are the weakest monsters on our list. But that just means they're setting the bar for how strong you need to be in D&D to not end up in an unpleasant fantasy jello salad. Boost mood and self-esteem. Exercise releases endorphins, a feel-good chemical in our brains, and can also be a great way to feel accomplished through setting and achieving goals, increasing feelings of self-efficacy. Mimics. Mimics are always catching adventurers unawares, offering quite a wallop with their plus three to strength. But if you also had a plus three to strength, you'd be better able to fight off that chomping chest. Better able to do daily tasks. Having greater strength means that physically demanding daily tasks get easier. Imagine bounding up the stairs laden down with all of your groceries in just one trip. Orcs. Notorious enemies of elves, dwarves, and humans, orcs have a plus three to strength. So best to hit the gym if you don't want to get carried off to Isengard. Lower risk of injury. Strength training helps reinforce major joints by improving the strength, range of motion, and mobility of tendons, muscles, and ligaments, protecting against injury. So you'll be able to do all the weird stuff your owner asks you to do for a long time to come. Tarrasque. One of the strongest monsters in D&D with a strength score of 30, having a high strength score yourself would be pretty helpful if this beast threatened your picnic. Lower risk of falls. Being stronger helps to improve your stability as you're better able to support your body, thereby reducing your likelihood of falling. Ancient Red Dragon. While fighting any dragon would be challenging, an ancient red dragon has a super high strength score of 30, just like the Tarrasque. So you'd need to be pretty beefy to resist getting buffeted by a wing gust, or being scooped up and made into dinner. To increase your strength, scientific studies have shown it's good to have a mix of isolation and compound exercises. Isolation exercises work one muscle or muscle group only, and are good at bulking up that specific muscle, or used a lot in physiotherapy and rehab after an injury. One you might recognize is the bicep curl, which is just targeting the bicep here, and is great for bulking that up, so in a fantasy world, you know, if you were trying to impress that hot tiefling at the bar with your bulging muscles, you might want to use an isolation bicep curl. Compound exercises are multi-joint exercises that target multiple muscles or muscle groups at the same time. These are great for keeping your heart rate up, giving you a more full, complete workout in a shorter amount of time, and better simulate real-world activities compared to isolation exercises. Now, a lot of bodyweight exercises are compound, like the humble push-up, which not only works your biceps or your arms, but also works your core and your back, giving you a nice, solid, stable, stable core so that you uh, don't end up with back problems after carrying your heavy, heavy travel pack over leagues and leagues of mountains. Why? Why? Ah! 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 <laughs> Why? <laughs> so if you're looking to up your strength for that big hydro fight you have coming up, 
try out some of these exercises and see if you can figure out if they're compound or isolation. <laughs> Do you want to protect your pup's bones and joints? Or make your familiar less likely to go down in those critical moments? <laughs> then try creature push-ups. First, get them to stand. Then sit. Then down. Then sit. Then up. Then sit. <laughs> then down. Then sit. And up. And there you have it, creature push-ups. Great at helping reinforce some basic training skills and getting your pup's bones and joints to stay nice and healthy and limber. And you know, uh, depending on your familiar, please, it might even end up being a, a jaw workout as they chomp on you and a vocal workout as they bark at you, like it was for Arbor. There you go. Good workout? Yeah. Try it at home. Okay, to test strength, we are going to get them to drag some weights uh, using very high value treats. You can see they're very interested in the treats. Uh, we're going to see how this goes. Okay, I'm going to come here. So I'm going to go back. Here. Strong. What's this? Come on. Okay, 10 pounds, no problem. Eight. going to charge me. Wait. 10 and 20 pounds were too easy, so we're moving up to 30. Hopefully, this is our tiebreaker. Wait. Break. Come on. Come on, Storm. Come on. Is it through his legs? Yeah. Ah! Okay. We'll try again. Arbor, 30 pounds. Break. <laughs> no problem. Arbor ability check. Today we're going to roll strength to see if Arbor... <coughs> Today we're going to test Arbor's strength to see if he would be able to withstand fighting a mimic if one, you know, was hiding as his weight bench or something. Now, since Arbor trounced Storm in the strength competition, and with the sheer number of times he tries to tackle me or pull my arm out of the socket while we're walking, I'm gonna say he's a pretty strong guy. We're gonna give him a plus two to strength rolls. Now, Mimic has plus three. So, I'm gonna roll for the Mimic. Lose cocked. Okay, so the Mimic got 
16, you can see there, which with their plus three makes it a 19, which is a pretty high score. So we're gonna see if Arbor would be able to best this mimic with his plus two. Okay, Arbor. Up, up. Hold. Break. <laughs> well, and that, my friends, is a 19, which with Arbor's plus two gives him a 21. So Arbor would indeed be able to beat a mimic in a fight. Yeah, that's a hypothesis. Anyway, good job. Oh. Yeah, good job. Good job. Okay. in physical activity, especially with the hands. In D&D, &D, dexterity <laughs> is the skill behind acrobatics, sleight of hand, and spell. Go back, go back, go back. So, we're gonna investigate our sneakiness and have him battle against Storm in some acrobatics contest to figure out what his dexterity score would be. Isn't that right, you crazy monster? Yeah. checks to see if Arbor would be able to slip stealthily past some guards to sneak into a castle and then dodge the laser traps in order to steal a cool gem. So from our experiments, Arbor, you know, he can be pretty dexterous when he's focused, but since he's often not very focused, we're gonna say he has a minus one to dexterity rolls. And for uh, his level, kind of a mid-low level, low level, 
We're gonna put his DC at 10 for both of these checks. Ready? Go. And how he does on the stealth check will impact his acrobatics check. Hold. Drop. Oh. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta let it go and you drop it. Prick. Okay, so we've got a 12, which turns into an 11. So he does pass the first one. He passes his stealth just barely. So he maybe uh, stumbles, gets a little bit of attention, but overall is able to sneak past the guards. And that means he's gonna approach his acrobatics check confidently. So we're gonna give him advantage. We're gonna roll twice and take the higher of the two scores. Ready? Hold. Break. Here. Good. Okay. First roll, we've got another 12, another 12, which again becomes an 11, which is a pass, but let's see if we can do any better. Okay, hold. Break. Break. It was caught, so we're gonna try again. Up, up, come on, come on. <coughs> I guess he doesn't want advantage. He's happy with his 11, his barely pass on both of those, uh, which is great, you know? He made it through, he doesn't have to rely on his party to save him, but uh, it's not the most impressive display. Anybody? You wanna try again? Try one more time. Hold, break, drop it. Ooh. Okay, and on the second one, the eventual second one, we got a 13, which uh, comes down to a 12 when we break it down. So in either way, Arbor would succeed on his acrobatics check as well as his stealth check. Not with any extra flair or impressiveness, but I guess he was focused enough that day to make it through. Anybody? What? Don't be offended, that's what you rolled. That's what you rolled. You barely passed, but you passed, okay? Okay, pop. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. Okay, let's go. No, no, no. Constitution in D&D refers to an individual's physical makeup, especially around the health, strength, and appearance of the body. Yeah. So your DM might ask for a constitution roll if you're trying to hold your breath or march all night without sleeping, especially in uh, inclement weather, or maybe you're just trying to chug a whole barrel of ale. So we are going to test Arbor's constitution by giving him a full day of fun activities and limiting his naps. And this is a dog, as you can see, who likes to nap. Are you ready? Ready? Okay, let's go. So to figure out their constitution scores, we are going to go on a 5k walk, note them at every kilometer, and then try to see how they do after. Ready dogs? Let's go. Let's go. Okay, we've just hit one kilometer. Both dogs still going strong. So that's uh, that's about 2k. We're, we're still doing great. That's 2k. We're going strong with both of them. All right, we're about halfway. We're probably going to do closer to six or seven k. Going off road break. All right, that is about 3k. Both dogs still doing strong. We've gone up some hills and in some unstable footing. We're still doing great. And another water break, just around 3K. And tangled dogs. Three kilometer chaos. And of course a forest bus stop sign. 
Maybe you can get the cat bus here. Storm getting truly chaotic at about 3.74 kilometers. Arbor walking nicely. And Arbor's getting to go for a little jog. How nice, how nice for Arbor. Yeah. Extra challenge for Storm. That rock was just about 4K. Just about 5K. We got a swimming Arbor. And Storm who really wants to swim, but is on the short leash now. Arbor, where are you going? Good job, buddy. <laughs> and Storm's got to go on the long line and get a swim in as well. Arbor's just going to sit in the water. Are you sitting? <laughs> Arbor, no attacking in the water, okay? That's 5k, just out of the water. Let me switch him to his back clip so he can now pull me up the hill. Go, Arbor, go! Go, Arbor, go! That is six kilometers. We still got two dogs going strong. Arbor is definitely starting to fade a little bit. He's not pulling very much. And Storm is still running off in the bush. Oh, I'm chasing bugs. Okay, we're all finished up about 6.73 kilometers with these two. Okay, so we just got finished our uh, about 6.7 kilometer walk. Uh, they've gotten in the water three times and now we're gonna see kind of how long it takes them to fall asleep and test uh, how long their endurance can last. Are you ready to keep going? My predictions are that he will fall asleep first and he will be still ready to go because uh, that is classically what happens. Five minutes post walk. We got one very tired puppy and one who's still kind of going. Are you tired? Was that a long walk? Yeah. You still ready to go, Storm? Yeah. 30 minutes in, Arbor has basically not stood up, and Storm is excitedly watching things happen. We're gonna keep this going all day and see who has the better endurance all day with water activities and people and all that good stuff. Hey, Arbor, are you excited? Arbor is on a long line. He could be doing stuff. And he's mostly just eating grass. Storm, however, went from the paddleboard into the boat. check. <laughs> Today we're going to roll a constitution saving throw to see how well Arbor's system would handle it if he ate something nasty off the side of the road. Now thankfully whenever this has happened in real life I've always been there to fish it out of his mouth but if I wasn't there how would his system do? So based on our experiments that we ran he managed to keep up pretty well but he was right tuckered out afterwards. Yeah so tired. And his digestive system has always been a little bit sensitive so we're gonna say our, our buddy here has a minus one to constitution. You ready? Should we roll? Okay, let's see. 
Let's see what the dice gods say. Hold. Break. Drop. Nope. Gotta roll in the thing. Gotta roll in the thing. Hold. Break. Oh, okay. And that is a 19, which even with his minus one is an 18. So that would pass most low level constitution checks, eh? Yeah. So the dice have decided that this big fluffy guy would indeed be able to survive eating something nasty on the side of the road. But uh, hey, let's not test that. Let's not test that theory, okay? Good? That's what you wanted? <laughs> Today we're talking about intelligence. It's an intelligent choice. Do oh. oh. always have good treats if you're working with a dog. <laughs> so intelligence refers to your ability to learn or understand, to deal with new or trying situations, or to apply knowledge to manipulate one's environment or think abstractly in uh, objective measured ways, like on a test. <laughs> so sleepy. So sleepy. Why are you fighting me so much this morning? Is it because you're sleepy? Or are you hungry? Or, hmm. hmm. <gasps> you don't have your shirt on. You don't have your shirt. Okay, wait, wait, right there, right, right there. Okay. You need your Geek Tropical shirt on. Okay, can you give me a paw? Geek Tropical is a US-based small business with over 400 amazing geeky and nerdy designs available on super soft button-up shirts like Arbor and I are wearing, or you can snag them on Hawaiian shirts, bucket hats, dresses, or even kids' Hawaiian shirts. You'll find designs for D&D dudes, science sweeties, fantasy fiends, botany bros, anime appreciators, queer queens, and more. Whatever your interest, Geek Tropical probably has a design for you. All of their designs are licensed from artists who actually get royalties for every sale of their designs. Plus, Geek Tropical has a firm no AI art stance, so you can rest assured knowing that every purchase you make will support a geekier, nerdy individual just like you. And that's not all! Geek Tropical prints to order to avoid a lot of the waste from large batch fast fashion processes. They use a trademarked, super soft, stretchy, moisture wicking fabric, and they have over 1,500 five star reviews. So if you'd like to join the party, use the link in the description to help support this channel, and use code ARBOR, that's A-R-B-O-R, -R, at checkout to get 10% off your purchase. Thank you to Geek Tropical for sponsoring this video and sustainably crafting such awesome, geek-tastic clothing. Is that better? Do you feel ready now? Okay. So, in D&D, intelligence is the skill. It's so comfy, it's like pajamas, right? I know. So, in D&D, intelligence is the skill behind arcana, investigation, history, nature, and religion. It's mostly used by wizards, wizards use a lot of intelligence, and then sometimes rogues because they do a lot of... Okay. They do a lot of investigating and sneaking around to try to, try to figure things out, which is where intelligence comes in. So that's what intelligence means in D&D. But I would argue that each of the six major stats in Dungeons & Dragons actually fits within one of the eight types of intelligence as described by psychologist Howard Gardner in 1983. Gardner described that it wasn't just intelligence as we think it, as like test-taking intelligence, as the only form of intelligence, but that a whole bunch of different things actually constitute different types of intelligence and in how we move through the world, and different understandings of different things as we move through the world. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so, Classic intelligence, as we have in as the D&D stat intelligence, I would say contains about three of the eight different types of intelligence as described by Gardner. I would think that this classical intelligence, based on my theory, would contain linguistic intelligence, which is speaking in words, logical mathematical intelligence, which is, you know, math and numbers and stuff, and then spatial intelligence, which I think could fit into a couple categories, but it makes sense in your classic intelligence. It's that understanding of pictures and things in space. So that's your classic intelligence contains the most different types, which I think makes sense. And then we have dexterity, strength, and constitution, which I think all fit within one type of intelligence called bodily kinesthetic, which is understanding of your body. So I would say strength is just straight body, body knowledge, think like bodybuild if people are able to build up their body in different ways. 
And then you have dexterity, which is more like your body in space and how it interacts with the world. So think like gymnasts and circus performers and things like that. And then you have constitution, which is an understanding of body endurance and how far you can push your body and the limits of your physical form. So I would say those three all fit within bodily kinesthetic intelligence. Next we have charisma, and I would say that charisma fits two of these eight types of intelligence. It fits musical intelligence, which you could put under regular intelligence because music is pretty mathematical, but a lot of bards, so our musical people in D&D, who use uh, music as magic and things like that, they are very charisma based. And it, uh, music deals a lot with the impact on people and how it impacts us. So I would say that charisma also contains uh, the other intelligence of interpersonal, how we relate to each other and understanding other people. So charisma would contain interpersonal and musical intelligence. And then finally we have wisdom, our final D&D stat that I think again contains two of the eight types of intelligence. I think we have nature intelligence in this one, so an understanding of the natural world and processes. In D&D, nature is a skill put under intelligence, but you have characters, uh, your character class of druid, which is a basically a nature wizard, and they use wisdom as their primary stat. So I would argue that you could put nature intelligence under wisdom, not intelligence intelligence. And then finally, intrapersonal intelligence, which is understanding of the self, I would put under wisdom. So there you go, eight different types of intelligence, six D&D stats, they all can fit within one of those types of intelligence, because it's not just this brain intelligence that is what intelligence is all about. Classic adage of, if you judged a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it would spend its whole life thinking it was stupid. If you judge a barbarian by their ability to read and retain knowledge from a book, they might think that they're not smart, but they have such a knowledge of their body and their ability to create change in the world through physical means and their ability to change their body, that is definitely a type of intelligence. So this week we are going to test Arbor's intelligence through a series, more classic intelligence. We're gonna test his intelligence through a series of little puzzles and tests. And we're gonna compare him against Storm, the Border Collie Aussie Shepherd that we like to compare to and see, uh, see how these different breeds and personalities do. You ready to test your smarts? Yeah. There are treats involved. You want treats? Okay, let's go. Let's go. Are we ready? Hop. 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 Legs. Break. Legs. Legs. Okay, but now we have to keep one dog away from it. Okay. Go around. Go around. Go around. Over here. Over here.
Very smart dogs most of the time, but this one has them stumped. <laughs> Slightly closer than Arbor, but not really. Closer. Storm. Storm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Good job, Storm. Good job, buddy. Way to go, Storm. Good boy. <laughs> One way to solve the puzzle, I guess. <laughs> Think about it for three seconds. Barbara, slide it. Sl slide it, buddy. No, he uh, he has the ability to figure out a lot of stuff. Once. Oh. <laughs> You are destructive, sir. Awesome. Yeah. Arbor. Arbor, bud. Cheers. <laughs> How'd you bring that? Arbor ability check. You're so calm today. He's being smart about it because we are testing intelligence. And I was smart in that I got a much bigger die. Arbor was getting a little interested in trying to chew the small one. So we had to upgrade. We now have a nice big one that he hasn't gotten to play with yet, but he's very interested in. So today we are going to test intelligence. We're gonna look at Arbor's investigation skill because I think his straight intelligence doesn't make a lot of sense to think about arcana or religion or things like that. But investigation is a pretty standard intelligence skill to test. So let's imagine that 
Arbor was out on a, on a wonderful adventure, right, with your party, and they enter into a room and he's got to find something. Now, Arbor can be pretty good at finding stuff. If there's a treat, he can find hidden treats, but he gives up pretty easy. So, <laughs> uh, I think we're gonna say that Arbor, come back, come here. He's starting the investigation already. Arbor, what's this? What's this? Come here. <laughs> All the way. Does that smell good? <laughs> so we are going to roll for an investigation check. He's gonna have a plus zero to this flat roll because again, he can be really good at finding stuff, but he doesn't stay focused long enough usually to do it. So let's see. Let's say DC 10 to find the secret trap door entrance to the room full of treats. Yeah? Okay. Hold. 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 Catch. Oh, good catch. Oh. <laughs> All right, this is uh, in <laughs> intelligence check for Arbor and dexterity check for me. Okay, ready? Catch. Oh. Okay, ready, ready? Catch. Okay, drop, drop. Okay, so even with a plus zero, Arbor has a 12, which is pretty good. That would pass the test. You did it. You passed. High five. Yeah, good job, buddy. So Arbor would be able to focus long enough if the room was full of treats. Yeah? Do you wanna play again? Oh, good job. Okay. Drop. Drop. No? <laughs> oh, oh. It's very bouncy. Oh. oh, good catch, good catch. Okay, drop. Can you drop, can I have it? Drop. Oh, good boy. Oh, if he rolled with advantage, he would get an 18. Even better. <laughs> so I think we have proven that this boy, pretty smart boy. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good boy. Good science, much intelligence. Yeah. Okay, let's go get treats. Come on. Oh. You going to let me put this on? No. <laughs> <laughs> faster, you let me put this on. Faster you get treats. Up, oh, come on, come here. <laughs> what is wisdom? <laughs> Why? <laughs> wisdom is the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. In D&D, &D, wisdom is the skill behind animal handling, insight, medicine, survival, and perception. Insight and perception being used a lot to figure out different situations, see if you can trust people, and just generally understand what's going on. <laughs> wisdom is also the skill that clerics, druids, and rangers use most which makes sense, connection to nature, understanding their environment, and surviving. And medicine. Clerics use a lot of medicine. So we are gonna test and see how wise this guy is. <laughs> yes, Arbor wants me to let you know that wisdom is also the skill that is used when uh, someone is trying to cast a fear spell on you in D&D. &D. <laughs> Yes, you have to roll to see uh, if you're wise enough to resist being afraid, right? Yes. Okay. Now, wisdom and armor <laughs> don't always go hand in hand. Uh, there's plenty of times where we're doing things and it's like, wow, if you would just let me do this, then we would get to the thing you want to do faster. <laughs> but he's also uh, pretty brave. He's a pretty brave guy and he, he doesn't get scared very easily. So, uh... We'll see. We'll see what this what this skill brings. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. Get off. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!
now. We're gonna roll a wisdom check. We're gonna check Arbor's insight. <laughs> He's raring to go. So we are gonna check Arbor's insight for, let's see, a perfectly uh, random example of if he runs up to another dog, if he sees if they want to be friends. Now, I'm not saying there's any real world basis to Arbor not having great insight here. And overall wisdom. <laughs> Exception of being able to resist fear, I think Arbor is uh, not the wisest dog. We're gonna go zero. He's not gonna have any bonus <laughs> to wisdom here. Okay, Arbor. <laughs> We're gonna roll an insight check. So you see another dog, you wanna go say hi. Are they friendly? Okay? We're gonna roll. Hold. Break! Break! Alright, now I don't know if I rolled that, but I'm gonna show it to you and then we'll roll again. So he got a 17, which is pretty great. So he would actually be able to tell if a dog was friendly, which is good, we'd be working on this. Okay, should we try again? Okay, hold, break, okay, roll the tray, hold. Okay, no, hey, come here. Okay, here, here. Okay, hold, break, break. Uh, after much effort, we've got a nat one. So, uh, <laughs> what do you think? Third time's the charm? Okay, up. Oh. Okay. Yeah. You, wanna, you need another roll? Okay. Hold. Don't need it. Hold. Break. Okay, and there we go. On the third attempt, he got a nat 20. So, uh, if we just roll straight, he gets a 17. With disadvantage, gets a one and with I guess double advantage or halfling luck he gets a nat 20 which is pretty good we've been working on this this understanding other dogs good job pa yeah you're so good so good yeah Are you wise Are you a wise dog <laughs> this? <laughs> what is charisma? Charisma is defined as a special magnetic appeal, a personal magic of leadership that inspires loyalty and enthusiasm. It's your ability to attract and influence people. It is. <laughs> In D&D, no, no, no. Ow. That's right. In D&D, charisma is sometimes referred to as the force of your personality. Right, and it's all about your ability to interact effectively with others. It's an important ability for bards, paladins, sorcerers, and warlocks, and encompasses the skills of ow, ow, intimidation, deception, performance, and persuasion. Are you trying to persuade me to give you treats? Okay, can we get through this first? No, don't worry, we're gonna look at all four of those skills. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna look at the science behind how to win friends and influence people. Right? One of the most popular self-help books of all time, okay? And then we are going to look at lies you've been told about lying to go through deception. We're going to have a performance model off, right? Oh, yeah. You're excited for that one. And then we're going to do an intimidation role check. Does that all sound good? Yeah. You ready to go? Okay, let's go! How to win friends and influence people. Top three tips backed by science. Smile. Smiling can make you seem courteous, likable, competent, and can help lift the mood of the folks around you. Remember people's names. 
Remembering someone's name shows them that they are important to you and fosters a sense of connection and trust. Be a good listener. Being a good listener creates a safe and comfortable space for people to share their thoughts and feelings, furthering that sense of trust and making people feel heard and respected. Three more tips backed by science. Arguments won't get you what you want. Arguments often come about because someone is trying to force another person to change their mind on a subject without considering that person's interests. But science says it doesn't work. A better approach is with positivity, humility, and specificity. Begin with praise and honest appreciation. Carnegie is very clear that it must be honest, not vapid flattery. Genuinely sharing how the other person is valuable and important creates a positive environment for collaboration and cooperation. Remember that people are complex and emotional. Unlike Vulcans, we humans are often driven by our emotions. So if you want to deal with people successfully, you need to consider and empathize with their emotions. Myth 1. Liars don't make eye contact. While this may hold true for young children or inexperienced liars, more brazen folks will actually hold more eye contact when they're lying. This is likely done as an overcompensation to prove that they're not lying, and tap into the powerful, subconscious sense of vulnerability and connection that we feel when making prolonged eye contact. Myth 2. Microfacial expressions reveal lying. While fleeting facial expressions can reveal that certain emotions are being concealed, it doesn't always mean that the person is maliciously lying. For example, if you're accusing someone of something they did not do, they may feel anger or fear about being wrongly accused. Understanding why they're concealing their emotions is the key. Myth 3. People can tell when they're being lied to. Most people are actually pretty bad at catching when they're being lied to, unfortunately. This is especially true for high-stakes lies like the ones that could end a relationship, job, lose you lots of money, or otherwise lead to a big and usually negative change. For most folks, they actually end up cooperating in the lie because the truth that their spouse is cheating or the person they hired is embezzling money is just too destabilizing to accept. Are you ready? It's time for performance off. And we're gonna model, okay. check. No, ow, 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 ow. All right. Now, Arbor's doing a pretty good job demonstrating uh, <laughs> what we're going to uh, test today. We're going to roll for intimidation since we're in Charisma Week, and this is a bit of a harder one to uh, do in person. <laughs> so, Arbor is already proving how he uses his teeth and his paws to intimidate me into giving him what he wants. So for this intimidation check, we are going to be checking if Arbor would be able to intimidate someone into giving him and his party a really good deal on treats. You know, for humans, it might be beer and, and mead and bread, lots of carbs. And then for him, he would get some nice, some nice doggy treats. Yeah, some nice meat. Yeah, are you ready to roll? Okay. I'm gonna say overall, he's a pretty charismatic fellow. We're gonna give him a plus two to this charisma roll. You ready? Yeah. Okay, catch. No, wait, wait, no, come back. Come back. Ready? Down. No, 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 no. Sir, sir, we're rolling, not biting. Sit. Sit. Hold. Drop. Drop. <laughs> no, no, okay, that's fine. Oh. Oh, and on intimidation, we have 
a nat 20 with his modifier that gives him a 22 to this intimidation check. Uh, this DC 10 intimidation check. You did very good. Yes, a nat 20. We don't have to do advantage. You you nailed it. You literally can't do any better. Yeah? Catch you. Oh, good catch. Good catch. Okay, so that was a lot of work. And we are here now to figure out what his scores might be. What is he good? Desperately wants this uh, die. That's a good boy. <laughs> so we have gone through all of his experiments, and we are going to uh, give Arbor ability scores based on if you're creating a D&D character. There are some standard scores that you can use uh, to set your six ability scores. So you have a 15, a 14, a 13, a 12, a 10, and an 8. All scores out of 20, and each of these come with different bonuses. So a uh, score of 15 comes with a plus two bonus to uh, ability checks of that type. Uh, 15 and 14 both come with two, 12 and 13 both come with plus one, and uh, 10 comes with a zero, and an eight comes with a minus one. So we have all of those and our scores again, we have strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. So after all of the experiments that this uh, big guy persisted through. After reviewing all of the videos and reassessing some of my initial my initial guesses based on uh, what I was seeing versus what the standard set scores are, uh, I've adjusted some of my initial scores that I gave Arbor. So first up, Arbor's major score, charisma. Surprising nobody. <laughs> so Arbor has a uh, 15 charisma score. This gives him a plus two to charisma. Next up, his second score is, what do you think? Strength, because he tries to pull me everywhere that he wants to go. So strength, he gets a 14, also a plus two to that ability score. Third, we have wisdom. Now this was a, is a little surprising, but he is pretty tough to scare. He's a pretty brave dog. And he also is very perceptive and perception is a score that or a skill that is underneath wisdom so i think wisdom would naturally kind of come third for this big guy and then fourth and fifth were really tough for me because i think intelligence and dexterity he's pretty even sometimes i mean both of them really come down to uh, a focus <laughs> a focus that he doesn't always have he has a good focus on this right now but intelligence and dex both require focus which we know this guy struggles with. So I've actually put dexterity as fourth because he can do a lot of stuff. He just has to focus long enough to actually do it and he doesn't like walk off of ramps or walk into poles and fun things like that. So dexterity is fourth. This is a 12 and that gives him a plus one. Now uh, wisdom was also, uh, wisdom was a 13 and that's a plus one. And now we've got the final two. So intelligence is fifth, right? Very smart guy, lacks, uh, focus and dedication and a lot of the intelligence skills of like investigation and, and insight. Arbor doesn't have the greatest insight. He uh, gets bored quickly with investigating, wants to move on to the next fun thing. So that's his fifth score. He gets a 10. That is a zero bonus. And then finally, up six, not evidenced by him right now, constitution. <laughs> this boy has very low endurance and uh, a good bit of a problematic digestive system uh, sometimes. So constitution is his lowest, he gets an eight. That is a minus one to that score. So charisma, strength, wisdom, dexterity, intelligence, and constitution are what this big guy scores are. Do you agree? If you don't agree, let me know in the comments what you think uh, might be his top or those middle ones are, are definitely, there's some interchangeability <laughs> through there. <laughs> again, demonstrating uh, his charisma and lack of constitution. <laughs> so from there, we can look at what class Arbor might be. Each class has a skill or two that is highly associated with it of what they might do a lot of. Like uh, monks are, they're running around, they're fighting things. It's very like crouching tiger, hidden dragon. So dexterity is a big one for monks, for example. So with Arbor's scores of charisma and strength, that actually puts him very close to a paladin. Now, paladins, you can think, if you saw the most recent uh, Dungeons and Dragons movie, the, the very like put together golden knight, shining armor, do-gooder type is a paladin. And that doesn't, doesn't really fit with this guy. He's a little more chaotic than uh, I would typically class a paladin as. So while his scores fit paladin, I don't think his personality fits paladin. Hey, up, 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 up. Oh yeah, good. 
Again, Dex. We're not a monk. Free right here. Yeah, go, go, go. Now with his strength score, I would be tempted to class him as a fighter or a barbarian, but fighters typically have a bit higher dex, and they also uh, need a bunch of focus, you know, to go through all of those hours and hours of training. And we've, as we've discussed, Arbor doesn't have the greatest focus. And then barbarians are, they have to tap into that rage. And Arbor's typically not a very angry guy. He doesn't really get rageful at anything. So, I don't really know if fighter or barbarian truly fits. But then if we look at charisma, and we look at one of the classes, because there's a few classes that use charisma, we look at one of them that uses it, and I think it fits pretty well. And I'm talking, of course, about sorcerers. Now, sorcerers tend to be a little bit more chaotic. They don't study magic, they're just born with it, just born with it. And they, uh, they can do some really powerful spells. So they're big hitters, charismatic focused, uh, naturally born with it, don't have to train to work for it. But the issue with sorcerers is their second skill tends to be, guess what, constitution. And as we've spoken about, Arbor doesn't have the greatest constitution in the world. So he might be a, uh, a sorcerer that tries to bust through to the front lines and has to be brought up a lot by a healer in his party. <laughs> hey, Which kind of works for the uh, insight issues. So there you go. So I think Arbor might be a sorcerer, maybe a wild magic sorcerer to really up that chaos. These are his ability scores as, as we've kind of gone through these experiments, but I'd love to know what you think. So get in the comments. Let me know. Do you agree with my assessments of his scores? Do you agree with my assessment of what class he might be? I want to do a roll to cap this all off. Okay. So hold. This is a, uh, see how accurate my, my guesses are. Hold. Okay. Drop. Oh no, Arbor, uh, <laughs> I think he disagrees a little bit. We rolled a three. Okay, now let's, let's see what I roll. What do I think that I got? Okay. Okay. I, I rolled a 14. Oh, oh really? So, uh, I think I'm slightly more accurate than Arbor does, but I want to know what you think. So hit me up in the comments, like, subscribe, it really helps out this channel, and thanks for sticking around to the end. Uh, I'm gonna go feed him before he eats my arm. Yeah, you want food? Breakfast? Okay, go, let's go, let's go, come on! Okay. Oh, there you go, okay. All right, let's go. Catch, okay. Join us on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook for more fantasy science, dog ability checks, and fun stuff like that. Yeah? Yeah? I think it's fun. <laughs>